In the last video, we figured out what, you know, how many different ways could, I don't know, five people, five people sit in three chairs. You know, so for example, if this is chair one, this is chair two, this is chair three, we said, well, in chair one, we could put five people. No one's sitting down. Then there's only going to be four people left, so we could put four different people in chair two. And then there would be three people left that we could put in chair three. So the total combina the total uh, permutations, the different ways that people could sit in the different chairs, if we cared about the order, uh, if we cared about which chair they were sitting down in, it would be five times four times three. Okay. And another way of thinking about that, five times four times three, that's the same thing. That equals five times four times 3 times 2 times 1 over what? Over 2 times 1. Right? And that's the same thing as 5 factorial over 2 factorial. And now where does this 2 come from? How is 2 related to the 5 and 3? Well, it's the difference between the two. So this is the same thing. This is equal to 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial. And that, in general, is how we figure out uh, how, many permutations can, uh, in, in how many permutations can five things uh, place themselves or be placed into three positions. And the general formula is, and we learned this in the last video, and I will switch colors, that if we want to put n things into, I don't know, k positions, and k has to be less than or equal to n. Well, actually, it doesn't have to, but well, for our purposes right now, assume it is, because our formula might break down if it weren't. And that equals n factorial over n minus k factorial. I always find this harder to memorize than just thinking about the spots and just saying, oh, well, you know, five people, five of the things could be here, and then once one thing is here, there's four possibilities left, and then there's three possibilities left. So I just kind of take the first, um, the way I think of it, I take the first k terms of the, of, the, of the n factorial, or in this case, I take the first three terms of the five factorial, one, two, three, five times four times three. That's how I think of permutations. So what if this is great if we cared, you know, if if we you know, let's say these are people A, B, C, D, E. So these are the five people that are going to sit in the chairs. This is great if we really cared, if if we wanted to count A the permutation A B C as different from the permutation A C B as different from the per permutation I don't know uh, B. A C as different from the permutation uh, B C A, and, and it will because uh, remember when we did this we actually cared about where they're sitting and in the previous video I actually you know we count we double counted everything because it cares if it, it matters if person A is in uh, seat one and person B is in seat two and then if they switch we recount it, right? This is where they switch. But what if we didn't care about that? What if we didn't care who's in what seat? We just wanted to know how many different ways can the five people sit down, right? So we want to count all the situations where uh, people, person A, B, and C are sitting down as essentially one situation, right? We don't care who's you know, sitting in which chair. We just care that those are the three people sitting down. That's the set, the subset of the people sitting down. And so the question then becomes, not how many different permutations or how many different ways can the people sit down. The, the, the question becomes, how many subsets of three can we take out of a set of five? And that's essentially, and I know I'm kind of uh, jumping up around a little bit, but that's essentially what a combination is. A combination is a permutation where you don't care about the order. So how do we figure it out? Well, when we figured out the permutations using this formula, we counted, for example, we counted ABC, ACB, BAC, BCA, and let's see, there should be two more combination, two more permutations, CAB and CBA. We counted all six of these as different permutations. But in our combinations, we're going to want to, uh, this is all essentially the same, the same combination, because we don't care about the order, right? So for any three 
different people that are in these seats, there's actually going to be six permutations that we're counting when we do the permutations. So if we want the combinations, we'll just divide by the number of ways we can rearrange three people into three seats. That's essentially what we did here. So how many different ways can you arrange three people into three seats? Well, this is kind of another permutation problem, right? The first seat you could put, you know, three different people, the second seat you put two different people, and the last seat, well, there's only one person left. So it equals three factorial, which is equal to six. Right? This is equal to three fac three factorial, which is equal to six. Hope I'm not confusing. The, the, what I'm just trying to say is when you did a permutation, we counted all of the different orders of how uh, of how people could arrange themselves. And what I'm saying now, well, how many different ways can people arrange themselves? Well, it's going to be the number of places factorial, right? Because you know, if we have three people in three spots, or let's say four people in four spots, the fourth spot can have four people, the second spot can have three, and so forth. The, th the third spot could have two, and the last spot will only have one, right? So it's, it's the number of spots factorial is how many permutations we're counting when we have just the same people, just they're, they're just playing musical chairs in the exact same seats. So in order to figure out the combination, so if we wanted to say how many people, let's say if we had five people, how many different groups of three can be seated? And we don't want to double, we don't want to more than double count. I don't know what the word is for counting something six times. Well, it's just going to be the same thing as the permutation divided by all of the extra counting we did. We'll, we'll just divide by the number of ways that three people can arrange themselves in three seats. And that's three factorial. right? So in general, if we, and I'm, I hope I'm making sense. Maybe I'll do a couple more examples in other videos. And definitely request it if you think this is extra confusing. So in general, if we say, what are the different ways that n things can be chosen, or the number of combinations that n things can be chosen into sets of r, where r is less than or equal to n. It's equal to the number of permutations you could create of putting n things into r spots divided by r factorial. right? Because we're going to. We're going, to, we're going to divide by the number of ways the R spots themselves could be rearranged, because we don't want to count those as extra. And so if we go back to this formula up here, well, this was a K, but now we're saying it's an R. This is the same thing as, so the permutations was n factorial over n minus R factorial. And now we're dividing everything by R factorial. So that equals, so let me just write this. And we could, this is often written as n choose r. Another way it's written is n choose r. This is called the binomial coefficient. And we'll do a whole series of modules on that as well, because this actually shows up in other, in polynomial expansion when you take polynomials to powers. But this is equal to n factorial over r factorial divided by n minus r factorial. You could memorize this. You know, it's useful if you want to do things quickly on tests. But it's very important to think about where it came from, right? The n factorial over the n minus r factorial. This is just the permutation. And how? And what is that? Well, that was just the first r. Uh, I guess you could call it the first r factors, the, the the r largest factors of n factorial. That's all that is. And then we do, when we do the combinations, we divide it by r factorial because we want to. Divided by all the different arrangements that the people could seat themselves in, in in R seats, or the balls could be placed in R cups. So in this situation, if we want to know how many different groups of three can be selected from five people or from five letters, it's going to be five factorial over three factorial times five minus three factorial, and that's. 5 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 3 factorial is just 6. We'll put that aside for a second. Divided by, this is 2 factorial, 2 times 1. So notice, the permu this is the permutation part right here. This, this term just gets rid of the two lowest factors. You get 5 times 3. 5 times 3, oh, sorry, there's a 4. 5 times 4 times 3, right, which is the number of permutations. And then we divide by uh, 6 because we get six permutations for really every combination. Maybe that confused you. 
But anyway, so we get 5 times 4 times 3 divided by 6. And that's what? 5 times 12 divided by 6, which is equal to 5 times 2, which is equal to there's 10 possible ways that we could take sets of 3 from a group of 5 things. See you in the next video.